So welcome back to another Lazy Sunday. It has been a while. I've been really busy with work and um, that binary clock blowing thing. Anyway, we can talk about that while we carry on with this. But I have a project to do, it's just a little kit that I picked up. It is a frequency counter, so it sort of works well with binary clock. So we can throw on our one hertz timer and probe around hopefully, and this should be able to read out some of those frequencies. Let's find out though. So uh, it comes in a nice, uh, I'll put links obviously in the uh, description, but it comes in a nice resealable anti-static bag. I don't know whether that damages how resistant they are, I'm not sure. So get all of this gubbins out. I think there's a bit of an echo in here today. Right, so we've got quite a lot of components here. So we've got um, five seven segment LEDs, seven segment LEDs, <laughs> seven segment displays. We've got one PIC microcontroller, that is the PIC 16F628A. And uh, for those of you that want to know, that's the Badger there. And we have a crystal here as well. What value is that? So that's a uh, 20.0 SDX, I think that's a 20 megahertz, isn't it? Right, so uh, no instructions, great. So I'm assuming it's got a good old solder mask here. It does. So um, should we have a little close up look at that first? So it looks like we've got our pick here, our displays will be there. I'm gonna assume the orientation is that the dot is at the bottom down here. We've got some diodes. We've got resistors, some 22 picofarad capacitors, probably for that crystal there. We've got a transistor. Oh no, the crystal's over here, where does that go? 22 picofarad. I don't see where the other one is. Um, a little pot there, it seems. Oh yeah, just there. That's a weird one. Is that a pot? Oh, no, it's a variable capacitor, isn't it? And then we've got a button, one of these big long ones, a uh, little tiny DC jack thing. I'm not sure I have something that's going to go in there, but we'll find out. A couple of transistors, and then uh, everything else is discrete, isn't it? Okay, well, let's get started. So I'm going to start off by putting in the smaller components. So that can be our 22 picofarad capacitors and also the resistors. So I'll just pop those in and then we'll get soldering. I should probably turn the soldering iron on as well. That would be a good idea, wouldn't it? So um, I was going to talk about the binary clock project and how that's going. Well, it's going really well. I've sent off for the final boards. So um, they'll be coming in the post at some point soon probably in a few weeks. And then I will create one, I'll make one of the boards. And uh, if it works out, then I will be sending them out to the person that gets one for free and then somebody else. And uh, then I'll put them up on Tindy or something. If anyone's got any advice on how to use Tindy or if it's a good platform or whatever, then do let me know. I like Tindy, I've bought stuff off Tindy before but I've not been a seller before. What have we got here? This is a 104, just there. So it'll be, it's gonna be a little bit of a new adventure for me trying that. So I'm a little bit excited, <laughs> I have to say. Um, but yeah, it works. The binary clock now works, but I haven't tested the accuracy of the clock. Now, why didn't I do that? Well, I tried with my scope, but unfortunately my scope doesn't do any math on it. Um, and so it's almost a guess. I mean, I've measured the distance with the, uh, the time base, so the divisions, and then I can roughly say it's one second. However, I'm pretty sure there's some variance there. It looks pretty good but then I wanna zoom in and see what the difference is. Because if the difference is only 
like a minute amount, it doesn't matter, but I'd rather tell you if it's actually fairly significant, like it might lose five seconds a day, that's important. So I'd like to know, I've got an extra component here and I don't see where it goes. It is a 22 picofarad capacitor. Hmm. Oh well, I will leave that to one side for now and I'll get the resistors in there. So we've got two 10K resistors and I've got a whole bunch of uh, these 1Ks. So I'll get the 1Ks out of the way first. Um, yeah, the oscilloscope. So mine's a Gould 400 uh, series scope and it's great. It's a digital storage oscilloscope. Um, it just, I really love how retro it looks. I think I'm going to focus up here so that when I'm putting these in, then it's at least in focus for you. Um, but the problem is it doesn't do anything math wise. So um, if I want to do some calculations, I have to do them manually. And I think you guys know by now how much I hate mathematics and love it at the same time, obviously, but it, uh, it's not my bag. I can't keep the numbers straight in my head. So I've purchased an oscilloscope. So a brand new oscilloscope. I shan't tell you what it is um, because I want it to be a little bit of a surprise, but it's a good oscilloscope. It's new. So like it's only just recently been released is what I mean. So uh, some of you might be disappointed to hear that it isn't the Rigol uh, that is meant to be the best scope around. It's not a four channel scope. Um, I've never used really more than one, one channel, if I'm honest. I know that might, might make me seem like I don't know what I'm doing, but I don't. Um, so yeah, I've only ever used one channel really. Um, two channels sounds like it's cool and everything, but oftentimes I just want to look at a frequency or see what a signal looks like or see how uh, my capacitors and resistors are changing the debounce on a button and stuff like that power supply noise, that kind of thing. Um, but I'm excited about it. It didn't cost me very much money either, which is really cool. And it isn't a hand tech. So I'll give you another little clue that's a bit of a teaser, I guess. Um, there aren't that many players out there, are there? So you could probably guess. Some of these resistors are going to go in the wrong way and people are going to be angry. No, they're all in the right way so far. Wow, you lucky devils, you. No one's going to get OCD triggered today. I might deliberately put one in differently. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's, that's coming, which I'm super excited for. And I also just did a little bit of a, an Amazon splurge while I was spending money anyway on this oscilloscope. I just took some money out of my savings account and spent it on other things too. So, um, I bought some new solder because I'm starting to run out. I've used this multi-core stuff and there's still quite a lot left here, but I'm starting to run out. So I'm going to use, and multi-core is really quite expensive. Um, we're talking like 40 quid, 40, 50 quid for um, a fair old amount of it. So um, I'm going to be looking at uh, some MG chemicals stuff. Now I've never used it before, but I've used an awful lot of other crap uh, solders and this one's in the 20 pound range, so it should be quite good. So I've got a 100K here it looks like. So let's pop that in. Oh, so the kit, yeah, let's go back to that. So it's essentially done and all I need to do now is figure out how much it's cost me so that I can uh, create a price based on the money I've spent on creating the kit. I mean, that's only normal business practice to do, but um, I'd like to keep it under 10 pounds. So the back of the envelope converse conversations, <laughs> calculations are that it will be roughly 10 pounds or less. Um, I actually think it might end up being less, but um, we'll see. Uh, because I haven't really added up all of the ICs and components and I've just had to buy some of these uh, little 
jumper headers. So um, I don't know if that's really going to impact it. Plus, until yesterday, I didn't really know how much I was going to spend on getting the board printed. So, right, that looks like we've got, oh, there's some diodes here. They can go in at the same time as well. Let's pop these in. Oh, look, I just realized what that X3 means. It just means four of those diodes. Well, that's fine. I, sorry, three. Why would it mean four? So I'll put one in. And there's two more. So yeah, once, once I've figured all of that out, it'll go up for sale on Tindy. Now, I don't want you all to be disappointed, but I couldn't really afford to make a lot more than 20. So I've gone for 20. So there'll be 20 kits available. And once they're gone, unless there's a huge amount of demand to make some more, then that will be it. Limited edition run. And I won't be reissuing it or anything like that. It's just gonna be the one time only deal. And the reason for that is because I've already started working on another project. And so I don't want to get distracted by doing it. And it's not a business, is it? So it's just a hobby. Um, I'm fascinated to see other people with the kit. I mean, it's going to be nuts to see other people with the same thing. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. Right, let's get these soldered in, shall we? Now I've learned from other boards that uh, it's probably a good idea to put a little bit of flux on. Whether you know the state of it or not, you might as well. It's not going to harm anything, he says. This is like no clean flux. flux. God, I think I said a swear word there. Uh, so um, it should be fairly right to stay on the board without cleaning it off. So let's get these sorted in. So the next project that I'm sort of moving on to, um, a little while back actually, I started it, or started thinking about it, but then I got distracted by the binary clock, um, was I wanted to create a pixel display. So I'd sort of seen something like a pixel display on the interwebs, but I didn't know anyone had actually made sort of an open source design for it. It turns out there are plenty of these kinds of things but it would be some NeoPixel type. So the ones I would use would be the SK6812, I think it is. And they are um, sort of addressable RGB LEDs. The reason I'd use those is because they're cheaper um, than NeoPixels. You can pick them up on the AliExpress pretty cheaply. And so at the time I designed my internet front end for this. Oh yeah, I didn't sort of mention that. It was gonna be um, an ESP8266 driven pixel display um, so that people on the internet could draw on it. Uh, it's gonna be 16 by 16 pixels, so 256. I didn't do that maths in my head, I now remem remember the number. But um, 256 uh, individual LEDs, uh, RGB LEDs. And you're gonna have the ability to uh, change that image on the net. So I designed a little web interface for it. Um, it was gonna be 10 by 10 or eight by eight, but um, someone said most old sprites from computer games are 16 by 16. And so I thought actually that was pretty cool. Let's do that. So I can get like Bomberman or Sonic the Hedgehog or something. Um, on my little display and have people more easily be able to create things for it. Um, of course, it will be open source or as open as I can be bothered to make it, which means if I can be bothered to make everything um, easy to read and documented, then I shall. But if it's uh, too much of a hassle, then I'll give you as much as I can and you can work it out later. <laughs> I need to clean this tip a little bit. But yeah, I'm at the point where I'm, I've got some tester boards coming. So these are just to test 
NeoPixels because I haven't really used them much. I've only used individual ones. Um, and I've bought four different types of NeoPixels. So some of them have different LEDs in them. So some have this, um, you've got the normal red, green, blue, but um, some of them have this different white, a warm white. And I sort of like the idea of that for a different project. And now I keep coming up with new things and not finishing the old ones. It's a bit shocking really, isn't it? So um, the other one is, do you remember, I, I sort of reviewed or rather featured a light that I really liked, which was, um, who was it created by? It's an anchor. It's like an anchor bedside light. And I really loved it. Um, and I have it on my bedside table. Um, and I use it every night when I go to bed. I go and turn that on, then I turn the big light off. Um, and then I've got that as like a reading light or a, I get scared of the dark night <laughs> or whatever really. It's just kind of nice. And so I also turn it on in the morning because it's that thing where you tap. So like just tap it and it comes on. Really liked it. Um, you can, if you jump back a few videos back, you'll be able to find it. Um, but it was really, really nice. Anyway, I like it so much that I want to make my own. Um, and I don't actually think I'll be able to do any better than this light, but um, I might be able to add an internet connected ability to it, but then it would ha probably have to be sort of corded. So it would, that one's battery powered, um, but uh, I would probably have to make a uh, USB powered one if I was gonna make it uh, internet connected. Uh, but then it's just an internet connected light, isn't it? But just on your bedside table, I don't know. I like the idea. So um, I've got these warm white LEDs um, that also have the ability to be RGB LEDs. Now, as you remember from that um, little anchor light, um, actually it wasn't um, single LEDs doing all the colors. There were different LEDs for different colors. But while I've got the ability, I might as well try it out with these uh, little SK8612 or 6812, 6812, that's what it was. Um, I might as well try it out with those. So that will be fun. And I'll document that for you guys so you can see, because what I'm more interested in is the current draw on these different types. So I bought the 5050 package, which is um, sort of the larger package for these, um, the standard package actually. Um, and I also bought the 3535 package, which is the smaller package. And I wanna see how big a difference that makes in terms of current draw. I'm hoping it's a fair amount, because if it is, um, then I'm gonna drive them at basically 50% brightness anyway. Um, and I'll be able to reduce the current requirements. So 256 of these little NeoPixel thingies are gonna be just a nightmare. <laughs> I mean, that's, um, so it's potentially, the potential um, current draw is 60 milliamps per LED. Uh, per NeoPixel. I'm going to call them NeoPixels. I know they're not, but addressable RGB, whatever. Um, so 60 milliamps times 256, it's a fair old whack, um, like 18 amps or something like that. So I don't have a power supply that can provide 18 amps at five volts. I'll either have to make something or buy something. Um, making something would be fun but I can certainly buy something or I can reduce the power requirements by a significant margin. But I don't think it's gonna be enough that I can just stick a USB adapter on it, but we'll, um, we'll endeavor to come up with a solution. Oh, missing one just there. All right, let's see what we got next. Um, let's pop in these transistors. Is it a transistor? Mm, 9018, I don't know. I'm gonna assume they are. I wanna leave my coffee to go cold. I've put a, uh, for the first time in a while, I've put a um, slow cooker thing together. So I'm actually cooking my own food rather than going to the shop and buying a ready meal or something, which is pretty sad, isn't it? 
but I'm well excited about it. <laughs> That's terrible, isn't it? I'm excited about having a ready meal, not ready meal, having a slow cooked meal. Damn, I love the slow cooker so much though. All right, let's get these transistors soldered in. Um, we were talking earlier about, uh, or I was mentioning solder. And I was wondering if you guys have any tips on solder. What kind of solder do you go for? Um, I really love this multi-core stuff. This was given to me, it was a present from um, uh, one of the technicians I work with. Uh, and I've used it ever since, it's fantastic. I've replaced it once, so. Um, but it was very expensive to replace. But it is the best that I've used having used only about three or four types and some of them Chinese ones. Right, what's next? So we've got five volts DC, oh, five two nine volts. Okay, I don't think we're gonna use this DC jack. I think I might just power it from little cables. I don't think I've got the requisite uh, bit. Oh, we've got a 7550 here. I don't know what all of these are. Um, it doesn't particularly matter. We're not here to figure out how this thing works. Just really here to have a chat and a solder and see if it works. Do, 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 do. Right, that's in there. And let's pop this variable capacitor in. Do they have a name? Like a variable resistor has a, is a potentiometer. Does a variable capacitor have a name? I'm going to have to just sort of tack it, I think, because it's going to fall out otherwise. So I'll tack it and I'll push the other side in later. I wonder. Very, just variable capacitor sounds good, but I like the term potentiometer. So it'd be nice to know if there's a capacitive version. Oh, brilliant. I've only gone and messed it up royally. Ouch. All right, let's try and solve this little problem. I've, um, I've now soldered over the hole. <laughs> so I'm just gonna heat it up and push it through, it'll be fine. There we go. I mean, that did slightly frighten me. That's better. Okie doke. Right, so we've got a crystal to throw in now. So let's pop that in. Don't need to mess around too much here. Um, I don't know if any of you caught the live stream the other day, but I hadn't done one of those in a while, so it was really fun to be able to pick that up back up again. But um, there were, I learned quite a lot then actually. Um, so I'd made some mistakes in my schematic, essentially not copying over what was in the breadboard. So, <laughs> The first side of my circuit for the binary clock is the seconds, the ten, the single seconds, and it's a um, it's a really simple circuit. Well, it's not really simple, but it was easy to replicate. And so what I did was um, I replicated that part of the circuit for basically everything, and then made individual changes. But some things I'd not changed, um, so bit foolish and I sort of left it like that as well um, which is why I had bodge wires all over my um, board all right I've got a button to go in then is it a good idea to put that in now or after the displays I think we'll go with after the displays so let's get those in. 
now. Whoa, we've got some bent pins here. That could have been my fault. Hopefully this is not too ruined. There we go. So I'm going to assume a small point down. I can't imagine it's any other way. That does not want to go in. What do I have to encourage it? <laughs> not a lot. Let's see, there must be a screwdriver. Yeah, there we go. Just encourage that pin. There we are. So that's one encouraged in. Now I'm going to encourage it to stay in by just uh, pushing some of the pins outwards like that so it won't drop out. Let's get the next one in. Oh, Mayday. This is not, it's not the easiest to pop these in. Oh, there's a bent pin here. Right, so that's them all in. That was oh, upsetting. It took a while. Um, uh, so they're all in now and I've had to really push them down quite a lot so they all line up, but uh, it looks okay. So let's get these soldered in. So I, I think this, it's stable enough for me not to have to use the, uh, the little vise. So I'm just going to solder the corner of each one and then um, we'll readjust if they've moved. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Oops. Yeah, do you know what? Let's pop this in the vise. No harm, no foul, right? Ah, okie doke. I wonder if I can do it this way. No, it won't go in the vise. <laughs> so we're going to just have to persevere. One, two, three, four, five. Five, so that's the last one. Right, just make sure they're all sitting pretty. That looks good, so we can continue with the rest now. So I'd be interested to know if you think that uh, selling on Tindy is the best plan for something that I'm only ever going to produce 20 of. I, mean, I can sell it on eBay, maybe that's a better idea. I have an eBay account, as we all do I'm sure. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just so difficult because I know a lot of you live in loads of different places and people who like kits um, don't really want to spend a lot of money. so. Because I don't really like to spend a lot of money on a kit. God, if it was, so I'm talking about it being ten pounds, um, not including postage, probably. Um, I don't think it's going to be ten pounds, honestly. But uh, God, I would. I don't think I would pay ten pounds from a kit for a kit from from China. I think that's. It's quite a lot, isn't it? You'd expect something quite good for that kind of money. Like a, I don't know, a DSO or something like that. At least something with a, a proper screen, not some <laughs> some crum crummy LEDs. Um, and it doesn't, you know, really difficult to read. Good battery life though, mind. The thing only draws like 12 milliamps with all of the LEDs on, so. Well, that's a point. I might need to buy some more LEDs. But yeah, I'm sure there are lots of places out there that um, 
I could sell on, but if you guys have got any experience, that'd be great to, to hear. Oops. I've been watching a couple of people recently and really enjoying their videos. Um, Adam Welch is one. Uh, what did Adam do recently? Was it the, I don't know, I've kind of got it confused with another video of someone else's. <laughs> I think Adam got himself a um, rework station, soldering re rework station, um, the hot air blower thing. And I was so totally jealous of that. I really, really want one. I think someone else, how was it Chris? I can't remember. He did the, the SMD solder challenge. Ah, oh, the SMD solder challenge. Um, I haven't bought it yet, but I've been sort of eyeing it for ages. Do you know what? I'm gonna leave those legs on there. It'll take forever to cut off. It's fine if they're like that, I think. Right, now we need to get the IC holder in. Whoops, that was clever, wasn't it? Should not have put that, should have done that first. Never mind. I'll get some blue tack on it. What do you mean you don't have any blue tack? You don't have any blue tack. Okay, I'm gonna use this bit of sponge from my old soldering iron. And hopefully that'll be okay. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah, so I've been sort of poking around, having a look at everyone's videos. Um, and I really, really enjoyed the, uh, the SMD challenge. I think I, I would, tr he did uh, some of it with um, a hot air rework thing. Um, and I'm, I'm so tempted to buy one, you know, but they're kind of pricey. I wouldn't want one that's an all in one station because my soldering iron's excellent. Uh, it's not let me down. It's a Tenma soldering station. I don't, I don't know uh, if it's got a model number or whatever, but I got it from Farnell, I think. Really, really excellent. But so yeah, I don't need a new soldering iron, but um, I wouldn't mind a hot air gun thing. Not a gun, they're not called that, are they? All right, so that's that done. And then a button. There we go, I was having trouble with the stupid button. <laughs> I couldn't, I just couldn't get the legs through. You know, they have that weird curly bend in them. Well, I had to just go and get a pair of pliers and just straighten them out so that they went through. It's very frustrating. Now make sure it's, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's, it's so annoying. There we go. What are we missing? Just this, what the devil is going on here? So we've got plus minus in ground, but they've only given us a three pin thing. So plus in ground, <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Wouldn't you want a four thing there? So where does the plus go? Okay, so the idea is that you can power it from over here as well. I'm just gonna go and get some, some things for this so that I don't have to use theirs. I've decided just to use uh, some of these little uh, pin header things and uh, we'll throw that in there instead. And that is how we're gonna work it. Um, it's not really sitting very well on the uh, the desk there, so the desk on the, the thing. So I'm just going to solder one of the pins, and then push the rest in. And there we go, and I can solder the rest. Good, so that means we can power the circuit from over here as well. So I traced out where the plus goes, 
and it goes to the plus over here and the minus goes to the minus over there. So yeah, it turns out that uh, it's basically exactly the same, I think, except it may not be. The ground over here goes to where? The ground doesn't appear to be connected. We'll see. <laughs> I'll plug it in, we'll find out. Mm, coffee and chocolate hop, not break. Right, so the next thing is just popping this chip in. I've just had a chocolate biscuit and a coffee. It's a wee break. We've, I've been at this like half an hour or more. I'm not even sure. Well, you'll know because it'll be in the length of the video, won't it, I guess? Right. Where is the dot? Somewhere around here. No, I need to roll that a little bit more on both sides, it seems. Oh God, I love a chocolate hobnob. There we go. That is good enough for me. Yep, perfect. Ah, perfect, whatever, close enough. So what I've done here is I've got my little um, one hertz timer, but I can probe around on the 4060 to get other values. Now I don't know um, what this needs to trigger, we'll find out. Not even sure what the capacitor's there for. I'm assuming the variable capacitor that is. I assume that means to, to trim this uh, to correct values, but since I don't have anything to measure exact values at the moment, well, I just have to wing it and see what this kicks out. So let's plug it in to power and ground. Now I couldn't find the right cable, so we're gonna run with, with gray for the negative. I can't plug that in, why is that? Is this one broken? All right, we're gonna go run with white for the negative, that's better. So white is negative and yellow can be positive. All right, anything happening there? Nope. Okay, well, let's just try connecting these two pins here. So I'm fairly sure that's why. Yeah. I thought so. So it's on at least. So I think this I think these two pins here, that one and that one are connected on the inside of this jack. I think that is the answer. And that's why they should be together. Let's find out. I can probe it. Oh, Mayday, what's that falling on the floor? Oh, well, whatever. Right, let's find out if those two bits on the, the switch are connected. So if they are, then I, I don't have to mess around with anything. I can just check whether those two are connected. So hopefully you'll be able to hear that sound, but it should be these two pins here. So that one and that one, yeah, they are. So let's solder that in so that I don't have any wires hanging around. And then we'll come back to this. There we go. Now I can just power it just using that, uh, that header at the front. There we go. Let's pop these back in. So there's our negative and there's our positive. And because they both share the ground, then, um, I mean, it should just work with just the signal pin in. So there it is powered. Hopefully you'll be able to see this okay. Let's uh, dim the lights a little, shall we? There we go. Hopefully that is in focus and dimmed. I'm using four AA cells here. And then we're gonna need our clock. So let's try two hertz. I think that's probably too low for this to read, honestly. But um, let's give it a go. Uh, no, it's not. So it says two. That's pretty good. Let's try something lower. In fact, let's just get a different cable. 
All right, now I've got a cable with a spike on the end. So let's try that instead. So let's try 0.5 Hertz. I don't know how it's going to display that, but we'll see. So, um, no, it looks like we've got a one Hertz limit. I was going to make a frequency timer um, and I was going to use a one Hertz time base, meaning that I couldn't really measure down to these lower frequencies. Um, but this is using a microcontroller, so it's, it's easier. Um, but I was going to do a CMOS one. So will it do one Hertz? Yeah, one Hertz is fine. So now I'm going to poke around on the 4060. It's dividing down a 32.768 kilohertz crystal. So we should be able to, if I can just figure out where the higher frequencies are. So that's eight hertz. Uh, pretty sure it shouldn't be four. I don't know whether these are going to be readable or not. So 512 hertz, that makes sense. Uh, 1024, that also makes sense. 256, that makes sense. So it looks like it's actually pretty good. That's zero. That's 2048. Um, it doesn't really look like it's showing up in the picture to me. So let's just mess around with some settings. There we go, that's better. So that uh, decimal point there's flashing, which is telling me it's in the kilohertz mode. Uh, drop down again to 256. 1024. 512. 2. Uh, and then that goes into the 4027. The JK flip-flop turns it into a 1. And then we've got 4. That does make sense. And then 8. And then somewhere over here we'll have some other frequencies. So this is one hundred and fifty six. Does that make sense? I can't remember what they are, but this one's the thirty two seven six six seven six eight. So that's my actual crystal input frequency. I wonder if we can probe the crystal itself. I don't think we generally can. You usually probe the output from one side of the resistor, I think. So there we go. Oh. What else do we have here? We've got 64 hertz. 128. These are Pretty accurate so far, 32. And let's just jump back to our crystal frequency. 32768766, it says there. So it's jumping around a little bit there. Um, I'm gonna test this when my oscilloscope arrives and we'll find out um, what the exact frequency is. I mean, it might actually be jumping up and down, who knows? So uh, anyway, that's quite successful and fairly easy. Let's just uh, bring you back into the light here. There we go. Yeah, so I like that. I like it a lot. It's really useful. I shall be using it. So I'll just turn it off. Um, yeah, I'll definitely use that in the future. Um, it might just be that it becomes a bit of a template for when I actually try and make that CMOS frequency counter. Um, I'll be putting that into a, a nice little case, I think, but this is really nice. Um, I'll pop a link in the description. It wasn't very expensive, so well worth picking up if you don't fancy getting a scope or you're happy just uh, sort of pottering about with electronics and you just want to see what a frequency is or see it change on one of these. Um, so I think that's nice. Yeah. All right, I'll see you again next time.